As urban centers go, Memphis is a rarity, blessed with an abundance of trees and green spaces such as T.O. Fuller State Park. Tucked away deep inside this natural gem is Chuckalisa Museum, a cultural gem of local and national significance. Dr. Robert Connolly is director here at Chuckalisa. Thanks for having us, Robert. Thank you for coming out. Sure. You're relatively new to the Memphis and Chuckalisa community. How long have you been around? I've been around about one year now. Yeah, and what brought you here? Well, the opportunities here at Chuckalisa with the museum and also uh, Chuckalisa is administered by the University of Memphis where I'm on faculty in the anthropology department and with the museum studies certification program. And the position here just brought together a lot of aspects of anthropology, museum studies, and American Indian culture that I've been keenly interested in for a number of years. Really? Why is Chuckalisa important? Chuckalisa is important because it's one of the premier, what we refer to as Mississippian culture sites in the lower Mississippi Valley, uh, occupied from about 1,000 to 1,500 wow. A.D. Wow, that's a long time ago. Yes. And I don't think most people in Memphis are aware of just how important Chuckalisa is to American culture, period. It's a national historic landmark. It's been uh, some of the earliest excavations at Mississippian sites uh, from the 1930s were conducted here at Chuckalisa. So what does one find when one comes to Chuckalisa? We come out to Chuckalisa now. Uh, we have a number of new exhibits uh, that uh, have just come online in the last couple of months. We have a hands-on archaeology exhibit where the visitor can touch, feel uh, the same, very same types of artifacts that archaeologists Archaeologists use wow. to analyze uh, the uh, prehistoric cultures that lived in this area. One of the things also that's real exciting that we have now is what we call the uh, uh, Choctaw Cultural Heritage Exhibit. And there's something, one thing that's very unique about Chuckalisa is the primary public interpreters here for the last 50 years have been American Indians. Uh, that's something which is unique for a prehistoric site uh, in the United States. Wow. So we have an exhibit now that documents and talks about this real legacy that we have here at Chuckalisa and this real benefit that we have with uh, the American Indian participation in uh, the public outreach here. Uh, Cubert Bell, who is the assistant director here, is a member of the Mississippi Band of Choctaw. Wow. When was Chuckalisa founded? Chuckalisa was actually discovered in 1938 by the Civilian Conservation Corps. And the reason it was founded is when they were building a swimming pool for a Jim Crow era segregated park here in Memphis for the African American community, they came upon some of the prehistoric mounds in this area. That park today is the T.O. Fuller Park, which right. has a golf course and many other uh, right. facilities. A nice golf course. A very nice golf <laughs> course. Uh, but that's how it was originally discovered. Yeah, interesting. So over the years, how has Chuckalisa kind of grown and morphed into what it is now? Well, Chuckalisa has gone through many different transitions. Uh, for example, in the past, uh, uh, one of the real hallmarks here was there was a burial exhibit right. where the human remains of the American Indian uh, uh, ancestors here were on display for the public. We have certainly become much more sensitive to uh, the cultures of the American Indians. We no longer uh, would do that any more than we would put your right. grandmother, my grandmother, uh, on display for visitors to see. Uh, but what we're doing now is that we are replacing them with, I, I, th I think, much more of a hands-on type of experience through our, uh, uh, for example, our hands-on uh, 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 laboratory exhibit. <clears throat> also, just a lot of the programming that we're doing with school groups today as well. We have a wide diversity of group pro programming, everything from uh, American Indian dance uh, presentations, demonstrations of hunting skills, uh, 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 story, story Storytelling uh, aspects of uh, Native American culture. We also have a, uh, an audiovisual presentation on the removal of American Indians in the 1800s to the Oklahoma reservations, and just a, a very wide diversity, including uh, at 10 o'clock and 1 o'clock daily, we have tours of the uh, uh, the museum and the uh, grounds here at the site. Earlier, we mentioned Cubert Bell, who is the assistant director here at Chuckalisa. Hi, Cubert. How you doing? Hi, I'm doing good. Good. Uh, you all have a new project, well not necessarily a new project, but a project out here, the Arboretum. Can you tell us what an Arboretum is? Arboretum is identifying trees and its usage and we have one of those that has, was sponsored by the Southwind Garden Club here 
and it was nationally certified just recently wow. as well. Wow, so just all the natural trees that are yeah, out here really. Absolutely, and very, very abundance of trees really? actually. Well, would you like to take us outside and show yeah, us? Absolutely. Okay. Q, we're on the way to the Arboretum out here, but I see we've got this um, ceremonial mound here. You want to tell us what the mound is uh, about? Yeah, the mound is referred to as the Mississippian period, which covers the 9th century to about the 15th century with the European contact. And these mounds, which could have been thousands of them up and down Mississippi River Valley because of various tribes building these mound builders, building these mounds. And the purpose of that mound is simply a dwelling place for the leader of the people that lived here. We've also got a little small garden over here uh, to the right. What's going on here? Yeah, what we're trying to do here is show the public what normally referred to as the three sisters of the American Indian garden which would be the corn, the squash, and beans. The squash provided a cover for unwanted grass not to grow because of its wide leaves. Wow. And the corn provided stock for the climbing beans to be able to climb the corn stalk and produce its beans. So that's how they became known as Three Sisters. So in the Arboretum here, Q, how many species of trees do you have? We have 29 different species of trees. This is what we call trailhead, which is the beginning of our nature trail, which incorporates both the Arboretum, nature trail, and the archaeological dig sites and so forth on this very venture throughout this wooded, very serene area here. Yeah, it really is and serene. we would take the people out for a half a mile nature walk up and down gullies and so forth. And it, it's a nice little travel for, and it's really a comfortable, shady place to be walking. Yes, it is. Um, finally, Hubert, as a Choctaw, what does it mean to you to be able to work here at Chukalisa? I think one thing that you will know the difference about Chukalisa versus other museum, even a historical museum like, or prehistoric museum like other uh, archaeological museum in this uh, state, there are no Indian or Native American or other uh, tribal existence working in their museums. Wow. And we, on the other hand, give an absolute authentic tribal presence here. And that's one of the best things about this place that I can say, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, Cuba, this has been an extremely informative uh, visit we've had here, and we really want to thank you guys for having us out. Sure, today. it's a pleasure, and don't forget about our celebration of the Arboretum's uh, national recognition in October this coming year, and we'll have a big dedication uh, on that day as well. Great, well, we look forward to that. Great, thank you. Sure.